Now, from the Weather Tracker TV Storm Studios, this is your weather tonight. Here's Chief Meteorologist William Cole. All right, folks, on a Saturday evening, I think it's been since last spring severe weather season that I've been here on a Saturday evening. Uh, obviously, that means we've got some active weather inbound. And in fact, most of you by now know we've got the Arctic front. It's moving through the area. Temperatures are dropping, wind chill factors are kicking in, and in fact, we're going to be dangerously cold over the next several days to make matters worse. We also have a round of wintry precipitation that is going to begin tomorrow, Sunday into Monday. The newest details, the newest data come in. Again, I'm going to catch you up on that over the next few minutes. But first of all, this would be your Saturday evening, and at least through mid-evening, uh, temperatures are still going to be in the 30s. It's going to be pretty blustery out there, but again, if you're at least trying to salvage your Saturday evening, again, through about 9 p.m., it's still going to be doable. But then the deeper we get into the evening, into the overnight, again, simply put, temperatures are just going to flatline. And again, those wind chills, they will continue to kick in as well. And because of that, overnight tonight, we do have a wind chill advisory in effect. These are pretty rare, uh, but again, this is any time your wind chill may get down to zero or maybe a little bit below zero. And again, especially from Interstate 20 to the north, especially all up along the Red River Valley, uh, we will have some dangerous wind chills by sunrise tomorrow morning. In fact, just locally in the Metroplex, teens going to by midnight, Again, if you're making those late night plans, really stay diligent to that, right? You can see your wind chill factor of only plus seven by sunrise tomorrow morning uh, will be down around zero. Again, here locally in the Metroplex, even through the day tomorrow, wind chill factors only in the teens. Now, we hope we don't have to use this much, but we want to go and show it one more time. This is just some new technology we have for winter into spring. And again, we can plot power outages and color code them, also give you some totals. Uh, again, around North Texas, we have more detailed information for the Metroplex. And again, we can present it several different ways. We're hoping, again, we don't have to use this as we go through this winter weather event. In fact, we're truly keeping the power outage potential low. That's gonna be for icing on the power lines. I think it's gonna be pretty minimal. Now, if ERCOT runs into issues, the grid has issues, that's completely separate from this, okay? So I just don't see a lot of icing on the lines. I think the primary concern, it is gonna be the roads, the bridges of the overpasses, the secondary roads, and again, some of the primary roads may also give us some issues as well. That's gonna be Sunday, and especially as we get into parts of Monday as well. Otherwise, there's the front blue line. You see it, it's moving through the area. Now there's no precipitation this evening. There's no precipitation tonight. Again, that does not begin until we get into tomorrow, Sunday. Now we have it tough with our temperatures dropping. We know we're gonna be cold, but again, look off to the north. We've got locations up across parts of the Dakotas, even over towards Montana, negative 20s, negative 30s, even some negative 40s. So again, it's just absolutely bitterly cold there. Obviously the really cold stuff is gonna stay well north of North Texas. But this is the other feature that I'm watching. You can see this little ripple coming in. And again, if it was just gonna get cold, that would be one thing, right? But now we have this ripple coming in and that's gonna offer us the opportunity of precipitation. Again, very late tomorrow as we go through Sunday, we'll see it developing through the afternoon. Again, late Sunday night. And then again, like I mentioned, even as we get into Monday as well. Again, I'll show you the modeling on that coming up. So it's not just the Southern Plains that's gonna get a taste of this cold. Take a look at the Deep South. And again, take a look even over towards the Florida Peninsula. Again, this is gonna be almost a nationwide event. Uh, the Southwest are the only folks that are truly lucky enough that is gonna at least kind of, at least not really be impacted, if you will, by this Arctic intrusion. So here's the modeling. This is really what I wanna get to, right? This is what you wanna see. So this evening we're quiet, tonight we're quiet, but by around 1 p.m. tomorrow afternoon, and remember the Cowboys game over in Arlington, the playoff game, uh, again, you can see a smattering of pink and purple beginning to fill in. This is gonna be light freezing mist, light freezing drizzle, light freezing rain, and some sleet. It's gonna persist again through Sunday, Sunday night, tapering off by about noon on Monday. And because of that, we do have a travel advisory, winter weather advisory here. Again, you can see for a good part of the area, I would anticipate travel conditions going downhill, especially bridges and overpasses first as we go through tomorrow. Teens and single digits, these are your overnight lows here. And then as we go through tomorrow, Sunday, temperatures don't move much. We're basically in the 20s as we go through the day. Light precipitation to some light and moderate precipitation all mixed again as we go through tomorrow. And then again, you can see as we get into Sunday night into Monday, it's another brutally cold night, right? Most locations tend to right around 15 degrees. Again, we taper off that precipitation as we get to around noon on Monday, and then even Monday remains cold as well. Again, we're gonna talk more about our 12-day forecast. It's coming up.